What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews. You name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku. As well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. Show your coach Shane Burkhart here of the North Arizona Lumberjacks. I have the Big Sky Conference. Coach, how things up in Arizona, man? Is it real hot out there with that dry desert heat so far, so far, coach? Well, boss, man, we sure do appreciate you having us on the show. The weather is beautiful right now. Today, it's about 78 degrees overcast. This week for Flagstaff has been really hot, mid 80s. And then down in Phoenix, it's been about 110. So all the Phoenicians are driving up the I-17 to spend some time in Flagstaff. I hear that, Coach. Coach, let me ask you, man, uh, for you, man, in business, man, been in school going to your sixth year, man, uh, it's hard as business, Coach, you know, how someone's turnover in this business. But talk about the administration supporting you, seeing your vision, understand, understanding what, what you're trying to build here and doing it the right way and being there for you and your staff as you go into year six there, Coach. Yeah, well, boss, man, you obviously have done your homework. I have – Great leadership with our athletic director, Mike Marlowe. Uh, you know, as I started here, I was the interim coach, and he said, hey, coach, I give a five-year contract. And then about six months later, we signed a five-year contract, signed an extension this past fall for, through 25-26. And our vision is to do it with recruiting within our region. Uh, we start with the state of Arizona. And, and, you know, California has always been very successful for northern Arizona Great college campus here at Flagstaff. But to your point, boss, man, is that we have everybody coming back who played valuable minutes last year. We had two guys, unfortunately, who were hurt when we lost in a Big Sky Championship in March of 23, Jack Wistersill and Carson Tout. And you sit back and reflect, well, why in the heck is everybody coming back uh, as far as our quality minutes? And I think because of our recruiting and because of the vision that we have when we wanted to get this job is that you have to recruit regionally. And I'm not a fool either, too. Now, if our guys had opportunities to play at Arizona State or Arizona, you know, obviously with the NIL now, 
you probably take that and you give him a hug on the way out. We lost a great point guard with Jalen Cohn to Cal. But ironically, we signed his college roommate from Cal, Monty Bowser, who will be a, a big get for us. He's on campus now. So things are really looking good, and we're looking forward to the season. I thought last year was going to be our arrival time after losing the Big Sky Championship. Those injuries, we just couldn't overcome them. We had 14 wins. We had a great season as far as the competitiveness in our culture. But this year, we're really looking to break through and really compete for the regular season, Big Sky Championship. And Coach, and Coach Shane, and also, man, a lot of times people get caught up in a record, but you have to play guaranteed games on the road and don't get games at home if the race money for your university. It gets complicated with the record. I don't think – our fans understand the dynamics, the nuance of records, what you have to do for the school, and sometimes you'll take some lumps for getting to that conference play, and it kind of makes record, record look worse than what it really is. Well, you're exactly right, and gee, I'm gonna have to send you some NAU gear. You're on, you're on your game here today. I love it. <laughs> so last year, we were the only team in our conference not to play a non-D1 team. So obviously, when you play a non-D1 team you anticipate winning that game. We had one game scheduled and UConn called us to open up there on opening night when we're handing a banner from the 2023 national championship. And as you said, they're by games and you just cannot pass up th that opportunity. Talk to our players in the summer. Like, no coach, we want to play at UConn. And those records absolutely are misleading. We're a one bid league. So we're trying to get as good as we can for our big sky conference. And to play UConn, I'll tell you what, with Danny Hurley, he's obviously been in the news recently, but he's one of the best coaches I've ever gone against. I've gone against some Hall of Fame coaches, so I'm not going to say he's the best. That's not fair to anybody. But he really helped our team get better through the season in years to come. 100% coach. And also, man, uh, you know, coach, and I know that people don't say this either, coach. I saw that you're recruiting. Scheduling is your hardest thing to do, with scheduling. So how do you approach scheduling, knowing you have to play by games, knowing you want to challenge yourself before the big sky play and striking the right balance of scheduling for, for your team so you don't kill them, but also you want to have a balance as well as you get ready to play um, when they count to January, February, March in Boise? Yeah, great question. So with our recruiting, let's just say the, the young man's not on campus yet. We actually talk about playing big games on a big stage. And with that, we talk about playing an Arizona State, a Michigan State, a UConn. We played Texas before, and uh, hopefully we play other schools, Arizona. But those are the type of guys we want on campus to help us win games. And then not to overdo it where we're sitting there at 0-10 going into the season. But, you know, you get those 50-50 games with D1 opponents. And then what, what are you doing with those games is you're trying to get as good as you can, to your point, January, February, early March, and go and win a Big Sky Tournament Championship. So there is a balance right there. We're going to change our scheduling a little bit this year so it's not so hard early. And, Coach, as you're getting the workouts here, having guys coming back this, this summer uh, to the team, do you – kind of do less team concepts this summer. We have so many guys familiar with the system, or do you more focus more on development this summer to get guys better so you can get, come back, come school in August, and hit the ground running as you get into practices there and get ready for November, November, November the fourth tip out. You know what, boss man? I better, I better check my office here. Like, you've been in our staff meetings here, for crying out loud. Like, there's a bug in here. But um, this year we're doing it completely different than every other summer. All our guys, we talk about being innate. So we are doing, like this week, we're doing a particular team in our league. Every week we're doing a team in our league as, as it's prepped for that week. And we're doing more team stuff than we ever have done. And I got this a little bit from Coach Kelvin Sampson at Houston, just listening to him and reading about him, is that we'll be ready to play a game by the end of July. And those guys who want to get shots up, we have a gun in here to shoot. Uh, all the time you can get into the gym you have full access to the gym and we're at the point now where our guys are very motivated to get good on their own and we only get four hours a week on the court right now so in those four hours we're doing all team concepts and getting ready for our season no doubt coach you, you know back where i played the magic day was october 15th when i played magic day it was oh crazy. yeah 
It, yep, was, it, yep. it, was, it was crazy. And uh, the head coach didn't come out, but the GA is out there, but we could, but he's literally that down the hallway. Where it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and some of those the, head coaches were in the gym. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how even as a player, I was like, these are some crazy rules we have. <laughs> well, but you guys, but when did you, and even me and myself, I'm older than you, I'm sure, but we really got better in the summer. That's when you have to mm-hmm. work, worry about this. It was just getting better. Just get to the gym. And sw- I'm from the Midwest. I'm from Michigan. You know, there's no AC in a gym back in those days where you're just sweating your, your butt off and you're dripping with sweat and you're working on your game to get better. Kind of you sweat in the summer so you don't bleed in the winter. No doubt, Coach. I'll get in the gym early in the morning before it got too hot in Atlanta. I'll go in here in the gym like it's 6 30 in the morning, and I'll go back towards the get dark here around about 9 30. So I'll go to the gym around about 9 o'clock. So I know it's gonna get dark. So I'll kind of run my workouts around when the dusk and dawn of Atlanta. I didn't want to be doing it in the heat that they here at the humidity here in Georgia. Hey, you know what? I grew up watching the Braves on TV because that was the only national game. And I'll tell you what, that Michigan heat, and as they call it, Hot Atlanta, it's a different heat. So you're ahead of the game getting in there early and late, not in the middle of the day. Yeah, because you go to a 735 Braves game, you still got about an hour and 40 minutes of heat <laughs> cooking you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Dale Murphy finish. days. I could probably – Dale Murphy, who else do they have? Bruce Benedict, I think I, Bruce Benedict became a ACC official. Rafael Ramirez, I mean, they had some players. Glenn Hubbard, Chris Chambliss, Ken Oberfield, Bob Horner, old ASU guy, Bob Horner. Uh, uh, coach Pendleton, the third base coach, Terry Pendleton, David oh, Justice. I, yeah, from the Cardinals, Cardinals into the Braves. Oh, absolutely. N- the coaches will blow your mind. I, I, was, I should be a, a Braves bat boy. Come on. Tell me what year. I was a kid, so I was a bat boy from uh, it was 1993 to 99. Oh, you were there for the heyday, yes. So, you got any good Bobby Cox stories? He he, he has a heck of a he has a heck of a mouth on him, man. He tells some great stories, and it's very colorful how he talks about stuff, you yeah. know. It's been just about those umpires. He got he got some good vulgarity stories, right? Yes, yes. I I enjoyed hearing them. <laughs> oh, love those guys. John Smoltz, he's one of my favorites to listen to on on baseball now. Yeah, it was fun, man. Those guys, man, been, been, uh, being a bad boy. It was fun. Also, a Hawks ball boy too as a kid. With the with the Hawks, Steve Smith there then. Steve Smith, Matumbo. I saw Jordan. All those. Now, I mean, coaches. This, this this was the key. You want to be a ball boy during those days on the busy inside. Sure. Yeah. Because you got we, stuff. You say that very respectfully, but absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I always chose busy inside. Yeah. I see them all, all the time. I don't busy inside. <laughs> yeah. Was Dominique gone by that time? By that time? No, uh, he was almost gone. It was the year before. I got there. He was about to get traded to the LA, LA Clippers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you got great stories. I'm sure you've used them on the airways. Yes, uh, I mean I've come across. I mean, I've come across all the coaches here. Coach Brown, uh, he was here at the Hawks. Coach Patello, Benny Wilkins, uh, Terry Stotts, Lon Kruger. You know, so those are the guys I came in contact with when they were when I was around the Hawks. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, coach. Yeah, man. Huh? Hey, coaches, I hate that they they changed that the MLB to stop the Braves and the Cubs. Having up their national the national deals because other teams were jealous, were jealous of it. So I hated when the Braves lost TBS because as a kid on the road, I knew I could watch the Braves seven thirty five at night. <laughs> every oh, yeah. every after the fresh Quincy Miller came on, <laughs> <laughs> I know I, I hear you. I, Cubs in the afternoon, and then I li- I'm a Detroit Tiger fan, so I listen to the Tigers at night and watch the Braves. You got it, coach. You got it, man. And coach, man, his coach. Um, how much do you kind of tap into other coaches outside of basketball to kind of help you as you coach your team? Because I, I know I, I kind of like to borrow some things from people when I listen to people on different podcasts and different things. So how, how do you kind of use the other people's experiences and their backgrounds to help you as well? Oh, all the time. I, I do it all the time. I like to think I'm a student of the game, but, you know, the student of building things too, 
I, I'm, I'm very proud of what we've done here at NAU in our, in our time and really expect a great season. But you know, even as a kid, boss, man, I'd read anything I could get on Vince Lombardi and Herb Brooks. Herb Brooks was the coach for the 1980 Olympic hockey team. And in growing up as a kid, I got to, you know, read the Detroit Free Press every day with Chuck Daly, Scotty Bowman, Sparky Anderson. And I still utilize all those guys now, like the new podcast. I might be saying it wrong, but with J.J. Redick and LeBron James, the the mind, the mind game or whatever it's called. Mind like, the game podcast. You got it. You got it. Thanks for helping me out on that. You, you just learn so much, and I love listening to the stories. And those guys are a different level as far as when, when you hear the game, different verbiage. But even a podcast, a hockey podcast, I'll listen to Spitting Chicklets, Cam and Strict. I really enjoy Cam and Strict out of St. Louis. But anything I can listen to when I'm driving, especially when you're recruiting, you're driving all the time. You know, I just use those as resources to to get better. And you know, some of the stuff you don't use, and some of them you do, and some of the stuff it really validates what you're already doing. One hundred percent, Coach. Yeah, I always, uh, my dad always tell talking to you about. Becoming better and, and reinventing yourself and looking to improve. That's what I do every day, man, coach. I try to, yeah, I try to be very for well prepared, talk to guys like yourself every day and, and know and be just on top of my game and get better every day. So my dad was a coach. So my dad like, put a lot of good qualities in me as a, as a young man that I use now, now today as I head towards my fifties. <laughs> yeah. No, I can tell your dad, we talked about it off fair. Your dad has been a positive role model for you and with your young son, three years old. He's in good hands, and you know that's really important for me too. That our guys have great college experiences. We have great parents, so I'm not trying to be a, a father figure, but I sure am trying to be a positive role model as these young men get older. And coach, not for you. I know my dad loved it as well. Like when his players got married, had a baby, had a got a new job, or some positive happened. For you, coach, you get those texts from your from my players, knowing you had a small piece in, uh, in their success. How does it make you feel knowing that you really impacted a young man in the right in the right way? Well, you talk about growing, boss man. I think when you're younger as a coach, you're just trying to win that game on a Thursday night or a Saturday afternoon. And at, when you're young, you're just try, that's what you're trying to do. But as you get older, and you can see, and my kids, my wife and I, we have four kids, and my kids have helped me so much to be a better coach. And when you get those invitations to go to their weddings or a graduation of a younger brother or some of my guys, and I've been coaching for 26 years, they got kids coming through or brothers. It makes you feel really good that you have been a positive part of somebody's life. And, you know, we even have a couple of guys who will come up here and watch a game here at NAU. We're only two hours from Phoenix and we'll head back to the house and, you know, we'll have an adult beverage with one of the former players and, it just makes you feel good that they're comfortable enough to be around you in those settings. And we have some guys who are playing professionally right now and, you know, they'll keep me updated how they're doing and or come by in the summer. We're on the road and, uh, or I'm recruiting, we go out to dinner. So it's very rewarding that aspect. And, and coach for you, man, coach for you, as you've been in the business as long as you have, man, uh, what's it, uh, what's changed most about the business of coaching and coaching players today for since you, when you got started in, in this business? You know, I, I would say two things, and I know it's a very basic answer because it's so popular right now. The NIL has really changed. You know, I talked to a, a coach today, a head coach for about half an hour on the phone, and and it's really good that the players have more rights. Maybe that's not the right word, but, you know, they, they have more options now, and I'm totally supportive of it. Uh, it, we're, it has worked both ways for us. We had a great point guard, as I mentioned, Jalen Cohn, who went and got NIL money from Cal. And we just can compete with Cal with the NIL money. Uh, you know, we stayed in touch. Our family went up and watched him and hung out with his family at the Pac-12 tournament this year. We're close. And that has changed. And it has worked the other way, too. Uh, it concerns me a little bit from the aspect of the unreal expectations. Sometimes oh, yeah. people will say, hey, how much do you have in NIL? I haven't seen that tree hanging with $100 bills anywhere here in Flagstaff or Tuscaloosa, like this is real money. In a transfer portal, it is what it is. Uh, enjoy your team. I'm going to coach our team 24 25. And, you know, let's be honest, boss man. If if we go 25 and 5 and we win a game in the NCAA tournament, 
half our team will probably be gone because they're successful players in the NCA and they're going to have options and go and get paid at a higher level. So, you know, we'll go out to lunch, go get a burger, give a man hug and, and I'll watch box scores and root for them and build our 25, 26 teams. That's the reality of it. Anybody who bitches about it, it's wasting their time. And I know that's right, Coach, because I like you got coaches. It's, just, it's kind of like pregnancy almost. It's like you're a GM now. You have to kind of speed date now. You already vet a young man quick. You already feel that, feel, feel them out as quick as you can and hope for the best almost the way it is now, Coach. Well, and it is. Like, for example, Alabama, right? Alabama get, gets to the Final Four this year. They get a k- commitment from a, a guy out of Pepperdine during the NCAA tournament, we're not there. We don't have the right emblem on our polos quite yet, but we have to kind of wait in the weeds a little bit and see what's real, what's not real. And then we get the other guys who don't sign, which to me, that's better because you get the real score after a while. You, you don't have to invest all that time and money into something that's not going to happen. No doubt. Coach, I'm asking you a couple of questions, Coach, uh, for you. At what point did you decide you want to get into coaching and, and kind of when you got, got, got the bud to want to want to coach? You know, it's funny you said my my youngest boy, Bennett, were coming home yesterday from his baseball practice. And he said, Dad, he's nine years old. Dad, when do you know you want to get in coaching? And, you know, as a kid, he's nine years old. He wants to play Major League Baseball. He wants to be in the NHL, the NFL, all the above, right? So I told him, you know what, when I was in high school, when I knew I probably wasn't good enough to, you know, pitch for the Detroit Tigers or, or you know, be the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, I knew I wanted to get into coaching. And as I said earlier, with the Vince Lombardi, Vince Lombardi never played at a high level. Herb Brooks played for a couple of teams, but really studying those guys, that's what I knew I wanted to in high school. And, you know, I was so fortunate to have a great high school coach in Doug Hainan and, and Coach Hainan, and, you know, you're 16, 17, you got a little smart aleck in you. And I said, I'm going to be a Division One coach someday. And he said, you know what, Shane? I believe you. And, you know, just the support system I had, and I knew I wanted to do it. I didn't know how to, but I knew what I wanted to do at that point in my life. And last one for you, Coach, man, uh, for you, like when you're not coaching this team, trying to lead these Lumberjacks, Coach, how do you kind of de- decompress and get time for yourself and your family away from the game to, to enjoy life? Yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm – embarrassed to say I really don't I coach um you know we have four kids my daughter is, is uh, gonna be a junior next year in high school and she loves basketball so my wife and I try to watch her as much as possible I try to be active in a local baseball and the little leagues why it can be our players are into it my daughter is playing softball and basketball we run our camps in the summer so it's really important to me to give back to our community not because I'm trying to raise money or because I'm trying to be anybody, but because when I was a young kid, I had great role models around me. I'm just trying to give back to what was given to me as a young person. Well, Coach, I'll tell you, it was a pleasure to get you on the show, Coach. And I thank you for for being flexible with me as my son being a little under the weather. I think it was was worth the wait, Coach. Trust me. It was great to chat with you today, man. It was truly fun, man. Hey, you know what? We got to get off here. So I want to hear all those stories. And the one thing I like to do is go watch sports or hang out at the beach for a couple of days. But there's nothing like going to watch a major league baseball game in Atlanta or Detroit. Or we try to make a baseball trip out of it. But I want to hear some of those stories off the air someday. And I really appreciate you having me on, boss, man. This coach was fun, brother. That sure was, man. All right. Thank you so much. All right. BS3 Network. Changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV, covering content and hot topics from A to Z, sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews, you name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku, as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker dot com backslash bs3 network you are now tuned to bs3 network what's up good people bet online is your number one source for all your betting needs the latest odds lines and matchup reports for baseball boxing golf and more 
Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online. When the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 105.5 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your Radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host JR Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.